Hey guys, we're going to show you today how to take down a uh, hand plane, what the parts are called, and basically how to reassemble so you'll have a basic 101 level knowledge of hand planes and uh, how they work and, and what the parts are now. It's very confusing when you get started out with hand planes. I know I was there, you know, a couple of years ago and learning just the basic terms, what the parts are called and what they do and you'll be able to basically work with any plane that you find because they're all pretty much the same. They've been copying these, you know, designs for well over a hundred years now. So if you figure this out, you're well on your way to uh, understanding these and getting an idea. Now typically what you're going to hear when referred to a plane is, is either a model number or a size. This one here doesn't have a model number, it's a Fulton brand, which they often made uh, hand planes for Sears. So in all likelihood this is something that was probably sold in a Sears at some point, probably pre-1960s. More likely from looking at it, probably between the 30s and the 50s. Your basic parts of the outside, of course, are going to be your front knob, your rear handle, which is sometimes called a tote. You'll hear it called sometimes. You have your sole, which is this metal bottom part. The mouth or throat, I sometimes hear it called, which is that's the part where the blade comes out of. And then you have your adjustment knob here on the back. And then you have your lateral adjuster here, here under the iron. Now, we'll go over real quick what these things do. Uh, first of all, your knobs, of course, are for hanging on to. The sole is what rides against the wood. You're going to bring it across the wood in a scraping motion. This lateral adjuster here in the back adjusts the angle of the blade. So if you, it basically goes back and forth, side to side, like you see here. And what that does is you can see it's moving the blade. And that gives you a different angle on your blade. So if you want it to be deeper on one side, see a little bit, see it moving kind of back and forth. So you can adjust, say if you want your cut to be a little bit askew, you can do that. That's the purpose of that. It's very simple and uh, it doesn't come off either, so that's one good thing. It stays pretty much permanently on. This adjustment screw in the back here, the adjusting knob, will adjust the depth of the blade. One way will bring it closer, one way will bring it out, and uh, it pretty much just turns. This one here needs to be adjusted, of course, so you're not seeing much movement. But yeah, it will bring this blade either further out into the, uh, the mouth or further back for storage. So that's what that does. Next we're going to remove the lever cap, which is this black piece here. And these are basically what tensions and puts tension on the blade and the uh, cap on top of the blade. These attach primarily through tension. You're going to see there's a screw here. And if you're fixing up an old plane, I would probably give that a little, you know, see if it'll loosen up nice and easy. And if it does, just give it a little uh, loosening because these uh, cast iron parts can get brittle. And basically, you're going to pull that little knob forward. And that's pretty much the same in almost every hand plane out there. You're going to see some that don't have this, but this provides the tension. You basically push that up and it puts the tension back. You can see the lever cap's tight again. Now it's loose. So it's held in place by that screw here which you can, you know, of course you want to just lightly tighten it. You don't want it to be super tight because your tension is actually coming from this device, which as you can see, puts tension on the blade below it. These, if you're going to restore, you want to make sure you clean this up because um, you'll see you get a lot of junk in there, but you want to make sure it's nice and flat. This black coating on here is called Japaning. This is almost like a tar or an asphalt. It's really tough. It stays on for a long time. And uh, you want to keep that on if you can. If the, your plane has any collectability, the more of this that's on it, the more uh, desirable it becomes. And plus, it's really difficult to replace. These can crack. Like I said, they're cast iron, so you'll see these things crack or break from people over-tightening them. Um, a lot of these are interchangeable between models. The big thing is just to find out the width, and you can interchange it maybe with a Stanley or a, or a Miller Falls or something like that. They're all very, very similar. 
Next is your cap iron. Sometimes you hear it referred to as a chip breaker. Um, sometimes just a cap. You know, this primarily is attached to the blade. So when you pull this out now, it's going to be attached to the blade via a screw. And that screw is always in the back. It's always usually a little uh, slotted screw. Sometimes these can be really seized up over time. So we're going to take that out. We're going to actually put the blade back while we talk about this. You can kind of see it as we go along. This basically is a piece of metal that allows even tension on the blade as it enters into the uh, plane so that the uh, frog isn't just pushing and putting tension on one spot or two. This allows for a nice even pressure. You can see it's kind of uh, rounded up here at the tip. And what that does is it helps guide the shavings away from the blade up and up and away, which is uh, kind of an important function as well. It's got a hole in it for that screw. We just showed you it's got this big hole here for that screw, and then it's got this square, which is where your adjuster rides into. And that adjuster that we pointed to, that brass adjuster knob, that is the end of it right there. As you turn this, it will bring it up and down. We'll zoom in so you can see that. That will help you understand the function a little better. Okay, so as we turn this, you can see this moving up and down. What that does, when everything's attached, you can see how that goes into that hole there. It will use the cap iron as a way to move this blade up and down. And you can see there's a slot in the blade, so you have a lot of room for adjustment up and down on your blade as you go along. Zoom back out. These, when you're cleaning them, you're going to want to get all this junk off, you know, smooth them out. Generally, just like a, a quick roam of the wire brush, maybe some like really fine sandpaper. Not much to them. They generally don't break. They're uh, usually the easiest part. And another thing you do is make sure that uh, this part here, oh, make sure I'm, this part here is making good contact with the edge of the blade near the bottom here. Make sure it's making good flat contact. Next is your actual iron, your cutting iron, as it's often referred to. This one here is beveled down, so as you can see, it's actually with the uh, chiseled edge was facing down towards the sole. Just has a cutout, so it's adjustable. You can see it's got the stamp on there. Usually the stamp is up on top. It says Fulton Warranted, which is the company. And one thing it is to know, you do want to know whether your, your plane was designed to go with the bevel up or the bevel down and you'll typically know based on where the stamp is that stamp will usually go up if there's no stamp you know generally you can tell if you put it in and it doesn't seem to fit right in the mouth usually you have to reverse it around but most larger size hand planes are with the bevel edge facing down sharpening these you want to clean them up of course you see this one here has some junk on it you can clean that up with some uh, sandpaper, maybe a buffing wheel, you know, even a wire brush, whatever. And uh, these are pretty easy to sharpen too. You really only need just to make sure that your back portion here is nice and flat. You know, you gotta lap that on some kind of a flat uh, abrasive. And then just uh, sharpen your angle to make it nice and sharp. So these are real quick. You can do it in like 20 minutes. This is that screw that we showed you that puts them together. Battery's running low, so I gotta move it along here. This piece here is called the frog, and it's usually held in place with two screws. You can see them there, we're gonna take these out real quick. We don't have much time left on this battery. Let me show you. And the cool thing is you can loosen them and adjust this frog. So if you need to move it, you know, maybe your blade's getting older, you've sharpened it one too many times, you can move this frog when it comes to uh, tuning your hand plane. And that's for another video. But we're going to take this out and call it a day on this video because my battery is about toast. We did a lot of filming today. And these can be 
quite long at times. Some of them are real short, some are real long. You'll find out as you go along. See that one there is out. Oh, they're both out. Okay. So the frog is out. The big thing with these, of course, is to make sure this area here, all this kind of gray area, is very flat. If there's any junk, you want to clean that off. Maybe give it a little uh, light sanding to make sure it's good and flat. You want to make sure that the blade, when you're restoring these, that the blade sits. Oh, let's get on camera. You want to make sure that blade sits very flat on these. You don't want them sitting at any weird angles. There are to be spaces. So you may need to do a little lapping of the frog to make sure it sits and that this blade sits very flat against it. Like I said, it's got this adjustment knob in the back for adjusting the height of the blade. And then the lateral adjuster, which you can see is a very simple uh, device, which pretty much just uses friction only to move that blade side to side. There you go in here, you see more of that black japanning. Like I said, you want to leave as much of that as you humanly can. That, that uh, is very tough and it's very difficult to replace as well. I typically just go in there with like a, a wire brush, clean it out real good with uh, like a solvent or something like that and try and keep that as original as you can. The more you can clean up, there's going to be a lot of sawdust and junk in there. Get as much out as you can. So you can see now you got your tote in the back or your rear handle. It's usually held in with a screw. In this case, it's a nice brass screw. Your front handle is held in with a screw as well. Usually it's rounded off. And you can see where your frog goes in. Usually there'll be uh, two holes for your frog. Most always two holes. You got your, your mouth or your throat there. Usually there'll be some kind of stamping in here. Or maybe you're onto the frog that might tell you the manufacturer or the model number or anything like that. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. And uh, if this video cuts out, I'm not going to bother editing it, guys. We're just going to put this thing back together real quick. But if we don't make it, we don't make it. Okay, putting this in is as simple as putting the frog back in. And we're going to go quick here, guys. Sorry. Keep looking at this, and that battery's going quick. So I can hear my kid on the baby monitor. He just woke up from a nap, so I really got to get going before he starts wailing. Okay, so you're going to adjust that, of course. You're going to use the plane. Right now it's in cockeyed, but we're moving along. And make sure that as you put this in, you want to make sure that the blade is sitting flat to the uh, to the frog. Right now there's a little gap down here at the bottom because it's not in there right. But I would make that kind of adjustment with a tune-up. Okay, you're going to take your cap iron and your blade. Of course, this is beveled down. So you want your, your Fulton on top or whatever brand it is on top. Usually it'll be some kind of marking. And you're going to bring it down. Kind of like that. So that just like a little bit of that edge just showing. The screw goes in the bottom, remember, not the top. So we're just going to start that in by hand. And those two of them, that only has to be snug. It doesn't have to be, like I said, you're looking here. You don't need a ton of room there. And we'll go over that more on the tune-up video. That goes through that hole. And like I said, your adjuster knob should be sticking out through there. See, the adjuster knob goes through there. That's the end of that screw. That goes through. Very simple. And of course, the last piece is the lever cap, which we're going to put on. Start out in the big, move it down a little. We're going to loosen it up a hair. So we can get that down. Just kind of, you're just going to want to very loosely, you don't want to very tight, because remember, you can snap these. And oh, that should have been up. Sorry, guys. When you put that in, you want to leave that up. Adjust this so it's just, you know, you want it a little wiggly so you can make some adjustment. So that way, if you need to adjust your blade or anything like that, you can make your adjustments. And then that should tighten everything back down, which now it is. It's nice and tight. Lateral works. You can see that. Moves the blade nicely. You got this. Adjustment knob works. It's nice and free. And there you go. That's take down and put back together all the part names. Next video we'll do, uh, hopefully within uh, the next little bit, will be about how to tune these and actually set them up for proper use.